The word slut is contentiously used in a myriad of social and cultural contexts in today's day and age. First appearing in the English language in 1402, once upon a time it simply just meant an untidy woman or girl. Nowadays it powerfully exerts various connotations, whether framed as positive or negative, but what does it actually mean and what place does it have in our society? I'm here today with Clementine Ford, feminist commentator and columnist for Fairfax's Daily Life, to discuss this very controversial term. Clementine, what do you think the word slut means or how would you define it? My favourite definition for it has always come from Emily Maguire's book Princesses and Porn Stars, which if you haven't read, you must. And she quotes a friend who says that slut is basically someone who's having more sex than the person calling them a slut thinks they should be having, which I think is quite a useful term or quite a useful definition to describe the term because the word slut is always used as an accusation, as a judgment on someone's behaviour, and it's very rarely applied to men. What kind of social context do you think the word slut is used uh, most commonly today? I think it's most commonly used as a way of criticising women and women's behaviour and a way of keeping women in their place. And I think that one of the things that concerns me most is how often women use it against each other, you know, particularly in schools and in, a, in amongst a certain age group. I think that the accusation of slut can be used by other girls and women to tear down women so that they can elevate themselves into a position of power. And it's all about this kind of false idea of the power that's available to women. Women, that um, women a lot of the times don't work together, but they see themselves in opposition and competition with each other. And slut is a very convenient, easy way to take power from another woman while presenting yourself in a moral position of superiority. Similar terms of disempowerment to the word slut that's offered to males is to call them a faggot or gay or a pussy, terms which usually serve to shame them for their sexuality, like the way slut does with women. Is there an interconnection between those words and their roots in misogyny? I think that there's lots of similarities between misogyny and homophobia, which is why there should be a natural allegiance between gay men and women. That's not always expressed. But at its heart, the words that are used to shame men for their sexuality or to remove something from them in the way that the word slut removes power from a woman are things that essentially remove their masculinity. So to call a man or a boy a faggot is to basically call him someone who's willing to be penetrated. If you take that to its logical conclusion calls them a woman. The idea that that the greatest kind of role that a human being can inhabit is that of a heterosexual male. It's very prevalent in those terms and everything that kind of falls outside of that is subject to criticism, particularly in homophobic insults that will be levelled at men. Basically, a heterosexual male will never ever be criticised seriously or have any kind of social power removed from them for behaving in exactly the way that society expects heterosexual males to behave. Is it possible for girls and women to appropriate the term and take back the power or should we always try and resist it? I think it's an interesting question because I understand the function of the reclamation of the word, particularly in terms of movements like slut walk. Personally, I still feel very uncomfortable with it. I don't feel like it's a term that can ever really be used to empower a woman. And I also have real problems with the idea that it can be reclaimed because I don't think that it was anything that ever really belonged to us in the first place. Some girls or women might feel disempowered when labelled a slut or they might quite like being called a slut. How can girls or women reconcile themselves in a world where we glorify both purity as well as sexiness and are simultaneously punished for it? I like to think of it in terms of the Disney complex. You know that Disney on the one hand shames Vanessa Hudgens for releasing naked photographs of herself to her boyfriend privately that were then exposed to society and she's forced to apologise for that and yet at the same time are quite happy to parade this kind of purity sort of complex in teenage girls decked out in short skirts and uh, low cut tops and this sort of promise of sexuality whilst at the same time a promise of chasteness. It's a completely impossible ideal that women and girls can never live up to. The word slut is a term that's primarily used in the western world. Would you say it's only relevant to white girls and women or do you think it can disempower women of colour as well? I really feel like I'm probably not qualified to answer that question because obviously I'm a white woman and I can't speak for any woman of colour in regards to how they feel about the word or how it's used against them. But I would say that for every issue that affects white women, for every accusation and criticism and insult that's used against them, that is compounded and timesed by so much more for women who don't, you know, experience the privilege of race. What would you say the opposite of a slut is if there's such a thing and is that a more desirable status for girls and women to occupy? Well, to me, the concept of a slut is a completely invented one. I don't even really know if there is an opposite of it. Do you think the word slut shows a fear of the modern world? Will it be used more because we fear women having more control over their bodies and sexuality? 
Or will it be used less because feminism is having a more powerful impact to educate future generations on gender equality? I think that the answer to that is probably a little bit of both. Whenever people begin to lose power, they scramble for more and they become desperate. So it's possible that we'll see more of a use of the term as an accusation, such as we did with Rush Limbaugh calling Sandra Fluck a slut on national radio in America. But at the same time, we'll see more opposition to that when that happens, because, you know, as the word fades out of fashion and as it as it really kind of, I mean, we mentioned the word faggot before. And while I'm certainly not suggesting that that is a word that is gone out of usage. I know that lots of homosexual men and homosexual women and everything that lies in between have that word applied to them in really hateful ways. But at the same time, that that word has completely moved out of being socially acceptable. You don't hear that just randomly applied on movies or TV anymore as without, without question. And I think that slut will hopefully go the same way as that, that it will become something that becomes passe and embarrassing and really very, very retro sexist for people to, to be willing to use. Do you think the word slut will ever be totally eradicated from our language? I think that hateful language will always exist and I think that there'll always be people who are willing to use it. But hopefully what will happen is that society will rise up against it and declare it to really be not acceptable. You know, women will always be held to a standard over their bodies and when when you're thinking about the power that women have or the power that's denied to them, it's very easy to, to use accusations like slut as a way of trying to control women, particularly as women gain more and more legal rights over their bodies. I mean, I mean, technically speaking, people say that we're living in a post-feminist society. I disagree with that because I think that laws all around the world still discriminate against women and the choices that they want to make about their bodies, whether or not it's in terms of reproductive rights or whether or not it's in terms of um, the violation of their bodies. So I think that as long as those things exist, as long as there's inequality between the sexes, words like slut will be used as a way to further disempower women. How do you think we would minimise use of the word slut against girls and women as a society? What we have internalised in understood about society is that there is this whole list of things that women aren't supposed to be. Fat, ugly, opinionated, slutty, too prudish, frigid, all of these different things. And the use of them as insults is only ever applied to women to get them to shut up or to change their behaviour. There's actually nothing to do with a woman as a person, who she is. It gives completely no credit to her complexity as a human being, to her history, to her choices, to her right to make choices based on her own kind of understanding of the world around her. It is only used to tear her down as a response to something she's done. And really, when you look at it like that, it has absolutely nothing to do with sex either. It's just a convenient tool to indicate to the woman and to the world around her, the society around her, that she's behaved in a way that is not acceptable, that has stepped outside of the rigid kind of terms of behaviour that women are supposed to adhere to. So when I look at it like that, I just feel like, again, it's something that's completely beneath me to even engage with. Because I feel like anyone who would use that word legitimately as an insult to try and tear down a woman is is not worthy of my time or uh, even recognition of their argument. I think a really, really good step towards, if not eradicating the word slut, then at least minimising its usage is to really focus on the solidarity between women and girls. It's so much easier to use that word as an insult and to perpetuate its legitimacy as an insult when women and girls are using it against each other. But what we really have to understand is that's a completely false understanding of power, that the power that we ascribe to women based on their sexual morality and behaviour is not real. And if you want to achieve power as a woman, it can't be done by stepping on the body of another woman to get there. Because there'll just be someone waiting there to do exactly the same thing to you. The only way that we can possibly ever achieve power as women is to do it together. And that's probably the message that I would want to instill most in young girls especially, and also women who still feel really crippled by this kind of threat of other women around them and this this understanding that there's such a limited availability of power to women that they have to fight with each other in order to get it. It's not true and when we work together we achieve so much more. So that was Clementine Ford, feminist commentator and columnist for Fairfax's Daily Life. Thank you so much for coming and speaking with me today Clementine. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Well I'm just really really thrilled that there's um, lots of women having this discussion.